I'm Garrett West and I'm Director of National Marine Facilities here at the National Oceanography Centre. So a research ship is one of the more specialised ships that you'll find at sea because we're not taking people or even cargo from point A to point B, but we're taking our scientists to some of the most challenging environments on the Earth. We're taking them out to places like the middle of the Atlantic, we're taking them to the polar regions to study uh, phenomena that, that, that are remote from the coast. So we are looking at things that are anything from geology to fishing and all points in between. NSC operates two research vessels on behalf of the Natural Environment Research Council, whose main funding comes from the uh, Department of Business Innovation Skills. So effectively, they're predominantly taxpayer funded. Planning a research cruise is a really quite intense activity that can start as early as a couple of years before the research cruise itself. The first part of this is a scientist coming up with an idea. And for a scientist, as I said, it can take a couple of years from, from applying for a grant to getting to sea. Uh, so we've got to translate their scientific requirements into how we deliver that with both the technology and the ship itself. And that involves a whole range of people, a small army of people that, that do that. My name's John Short. I'm Senior Project Manager within the Program Management team of NMFC Systems. We are basically responsible for planning uh, all of the equipment for all of the teams. Um, we start off by talking to the um, scientific staff who are going to use our vessels and um, work with them to decide which piece of equipment from the marine equipment pool they need to carry out their science. We work out where it's going to go on the ship, which members of the technical party are going to operate the equipment, and then all of the logistics to uh, make sure the right equipment gets to the right place at the right time with the right people. So uh, I spend probably 80% of my time working in the office um, planning cruises, and then 20% of my time on board the ship operating the equipment. My name is Paul Corro and I'm head of the Census and Moorings Group within Sea Systems and we provide uh, support at sea and ashore for towed vehicles, profiling vehicles and uh, moored instrumentation. Typically a technician will do about 90 days sea time a year and the rest um, of the time when they're not on leave they will be in the labs and offices preparing for a cruise. We get involved in talking to the scientists at the very early stages of the cruise, um, what capabilities that the instruments can do and what the type of science they want to perform. And then we'll assign equipment, uh, we'll service equipment, we'll maintain the equipment to get ready for sea. Um, we have a huge amount of instruments on the shelf ready and we'll prepare those, we'll calibrate them, we'll service them and have them ready. And then once the instruments are at sea, it sails with a, a group of technicians who are trained and then through the 24-hour working cycle of the ship they will support that equipment and, and provide technical support which basically allow the instruments to gather data which the scientists then look at. My name's Mark, I'm head chef on board Discovery. Um, I manage the catering team, providing uh, meals and catering for the crew and scientists on board. First thing in the morning, I'll bake fresh bread. Then I'll make soup, we have fresh soup every day. Then crack on and prepare lunch. Do um, a lot of salads, jacket potatoes, various fillings. We prepare the evening meal, do that during the afternoon, have a starter main course and a dessert. You should have two or three choices sometimes. Try and keep it a, a wide variety of food because obviously we have different scientists on board on cruises from all parts of the world. So cruise can last four weeks, so that's a lot of meals. I'm Amy Whelan. I'm a chef on the ship. I am from first thing in the morning, I start about six in the morning, um, get on my breakfast prep, do breakfast, um, 
and then I do salads for lunch and cold meats and for the evening I've got to get a starter done and a dessert. But I wanted to be a chef in the Royal Navy from 10 years old so I went to Sea Cadets um, but this job come along before the Royal Navy so I thought I'd take this instead and it's worked out pretty all right. Yeah, I love it. I just love cooking and traveling the world. Hi, my name is Ian. Um, I'm the Parasite Catering Officer on board with Discovery. Day to day with scientists on board is, is looking after the scientists, making sure they're getting what they need um, and, and really have no wants. It's a guest service, it's a hospitality position. You can be looking after train travel at 7 o'clock in the morning, you can be looking after uh, garbage disposal at 8 o'clock, you can be looking after meals at 9 o'clock, you can be looking at, at shortages at, at 10 o'clock, you check in the bars at 12 o'clock, making sure the ship's clean, making sure the stewards are where they should be, doing what they should be doing. I think sailors, seamen, uh, are, are a fairly unique breed. This is not, this is not, um, it's not a job. It's not just a job, this is, it's, it's a way of life, completely a way of life. We all have family, we all, um, we all have a home life, but you'll tend to find with, with sailors, with seamen, when they come away, that's what they do. They do that, and you'll find most of them have done it for years. My name's Geoffrey Osborne, I'm a steward, assistant steward on the uh, Discovery. Well, with Nurk really, been here for about uh, 25, 26 years. Daily basis, I clean accommodation. We have to assistant stewards when we have a uh, full crowd on board. I get up at half past four, and then I come up and sort out the uh, saloon and everything from last night, all the plates and bits and pieces left over. I make the scientists' beds and bits and pieces like that, and do all the linen changes, everything. During a cruise, uh, life is non-stop. Uh, ships run 24 hours a day, science never sleeps. The uh, operations will continue, as I say, around the clock, and that will mean not only the ship's crew working around the clock, but also our scientists and technicians. I'm Jo Cox, uh, captain of the research ship Discovery. My daily role is to oversee the safety and well-being of the vessel um, and everything that encompasses, so management of all the ship's crew, uh, the safety of the vessel, managing the scientists and their expectations and ensuring that we're meeting all of the aims of each of the different science cruises. Typical day starts 7.30 in the morning, um, come out to the bridge and see what's been going on overnight, make sure that we're where we're supposed to be, that everything's happened as it should have done overnight and there have been no issues I need to be aware of. The bridge is manned 24 hours a day. We've got three deck officers working in rotation um, and they do four hours on, eight hours off each um, and they drive the ship for whatever scientific deployments we need to be doing in that day. So that could be stationary work with over the side deployments. Um, we can go down to about 14,000 metres on some of our equipment. So depending on water depth, um, really deep down, uh, deploying, recovering scientific moorings, um, towing equipment, uh, you name it, we can do it. Malcolm Woodward, I'm from Plymouth Marine Laboratory and um, I'm going to be Principal Scientist for the forthcoming um, UK Shelf Seas IJ Chemistry Cruise. One thing I think they, this is what's called um, a community programme, so it brings the expertise from around the UK in together and also then the other important thing is it does the training. So you've got big PhD students, or lots of PhD students on board and postdocs. So it's an older generation. And a lot of it, and so the students are, you know, learning, but also, you know, they learn very quickly, and so they're doing the key work as well. Most a lot of them are, are doing the sort of the front end work of this. So, so all of that's important for the future and, and you know, UK research going forward. My name is uh, Amandine, and uh, I'm French. I work at the University of Otago in New Zealand, and I just came over on this cruise to do 
the nutrients and a big ship like this one is actually really nice like everything is cool like the labs are really big you have everything you need basically to, to live and enjoy you have really good food there is always someone around to, to talk to or you can always go and I don't know have a cup of tea you can talk to the crew you can even go to the top of the ship and talk with the captain and yeah I don't know the whole experience being away for a month and it's really different from everyday life. My name is Chris, I'm second engineer on the Royal Research Ship Discovery. With the equipment on board, uh, we have like a, a planned maintenance system, uh, so we have to periodically check the equipment for correct operation, schedule repairs. Um, the kind of things we would look after on here would be everything from the generators, diesel engines, uh, propulsion machines, sewage systems, air compressors, purifiers and we work sort of six months of the year or six months off so there's a lot of travel and the sort of atmosphere you get on board is like a, it's like a family atmosphere everyone so us to work together and help each other and look out for each other so it was appealing it's a lifestyle really the end of a cruise is very much the reverse of what happens at the beginning of a cruise we'll be unloading the ship uh, of all the equipment or much of the equipment that we've had on board from the previous cruise. But a key part of it is actually unloading the results, the digital data that we'll have collected and been stored on the, the ship's network. But also importantly, there'll be physical samples as well. So the effort that goes together in bringing this team to plan and deliver these cruises is really important for furthering our understanding of, of our world's oceans. Those oceans underpin how this world operates. The impact of the oceans on the world's climate, resources, sources of food, energy, is something which is vitally important for all of us that live on this earth. Um, the fulfilment and satisfaction that this type of ship gives you is second to none. You're interacting with some fascinating, interesting people. Every trip is different. Um, and you actually feel at the end of the day that you've made a really, really positive impact and a really, really big difference.